week after week of arduous days, the Navy has been preparing to make the Coronation Review the greatest in its history. Days of stress and strain, days of endless rehearsal, days that seemed all too short to get ready for the dazzling display that was to come. For the Navy remembers that like his father, George VI is a sailor king who received his final training at the Royal Naval College at Dartmouth, whose first after-school memories must be of life at sea with the Grand Fleet. Small wonder at the warmth of Portsmouth welcome the day before the review as their majesties arrive at the South Railway jetty to embark on the royal yacht Victoria and Albert. At the exact spot where King George V walked up the gangway only two short years ago, his sailor son is piped aboard. and a salute of 21 guns booms out over the Solent and echoes back seconds later. The next morning dawns dull and grey to find His Majesty receiving the Navy's high officials, the Dominion captains and the 17 commanders of the foreign battleships sent to celebrate his coronation and to grace his review. While a few feet away Princess Elizabeth talks to the King's aide Lord Louis Mountbatten, a picture of childhood interest in the mighty fleet which lies out in the bay, in all the power of its massive immobility. Their Majesties and the Princess go up to the bridge. Slowly the Victoria and Albert steams out of Portsmouth Harbour. A pale sun comes out to shine on grey steel and coloured bunting. As our camera takes to the air, six miles of warships unroll against a curtain of grey mist, out of which presently will roar the vibrating thunder of the Navy's salute to its King.